Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder, and this is our tropical update for Sunday, June 16th. Jeff, just as, this is another reminder how quickly things can change. When we talked last 24 hours ago, we were looking at a 40% chance of a development, but more importantly, the rain totals for Texas have increased quite a bit. Now the National Hurricane Center is giving this system in the southwestern Gulf, Gulf a 60% chance of development into a tropical depression or even a named storm. But that's really irrelevant because the impacts for southeast Texas are going to be the same. And also just quickly mention that yellow hatched area to the east of Florida, that popped up as well. National Hurricane Center giving that a 30% chance of development. That system expected to move into the southeastern United States, so not affecting the Texas coast so much, but it will have, will have impacts in the southeastern United States. So Jeff, walk us through the models. What are you seeing? What can we expect? Yeah, so this is a, the image, like you mentioned here, we're, we're starting to see the very slow a progression of this this trough we've been talking about here in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico move to the west and northwest and get out over here into the southern Gulf of Mexico. You can see the showers and thunderstorms now approaching the Louisiana coast. That's that surge of tropical moisture we've been talking about for the last several days. It's starting to approach the central Gulf coast and then we'll be moving on to the Texas coast as we get into tomorrow. Uh, you can see we, we still have a decently defined trough down here on the, the southern side of Central America. Um, and, and I do want to mention that we are expecting some just absolutely incredible rainfall totals here um, on the southern coast of Mexico, um, Guatemala, Honduras, these areas down here. Anywhere from 30 to 40 inches of rain wow. will be possible this week. Um, and and, the, and the, if you can just imagine this whole area is kind of circulating and we're on the northern side of this. And so they're getting westerly winds, which is a very favorable wind here to produce very heavy rains on these mountains. And so uh, catastrophic flash flooding is likely here in Central America. Um, and then to shift over into our neck of the woods. Uh, so let's just look at the models real quick. So this is the GFS for around uh, midday Tuesday. Uh, you can see it has this very broad circulation. And, and like you mentioned, if this develops into a depression or a tropical storm and gets a name, it's kind of irrelevant at this point. We are going to get weather on the Texas coast. And the focus should not be what are we naming this and if it gets a name, but the impacts that we're going to have here on the Texas coast and the upper Texas coast. And you can just tell by the broad nature, if you look at you know surface low somewhere, possibly down here southeast of Brownsville, but all the weather is up here, southwest Louisiana, upper Texas coast. You can see the heavy rains here on the northeast flank of it. Also, as you mentioned, this system out here in the southwest Atlantic, I wouldn't sleep on this. Uh, if you're Georgia, the Florida coast, uh, this is kind of the tail end of this old front uh, that breaks off under the big high pressure ridge that's forming over the northeast for the very hot conditions this week there. And that's going to come westward. And there's going to be some decently favorable conditions for development. I don't think we're looking at anything strong. But we could have a tropical storm on the Florida East Coast as we get into uh, later this week. Here's the European, not as well defined as the uh, GFS on Tuesday, so kind of more of a broad trough. Again, you can see the weather here on the northeast side of this. The European does eventually form a, a pretty broad surface low here and brings it up towards the northeast Mexican coast as we get into uh, Wednesday. But notice you're, this whole fetch or this, this lining up of the moisture from the Northwestern Caribbean all the way up towards the Texas coast. And that's what we're really starting to be concerned about here. And I typically don't like to show deterministic rainfall forecast because this bounces around. Every, every six hours or so, we get a new model run for these deterministic forecasts. Um, but I'm showing you the differences between, this is the GFS and you can see it's producing uh, just a tremendous amount of rain here over portions of Texas. I wouldn't get locked in on, you know, this certain area. This has been bouncing around yesterday afternoon. It was over here in Southwest Louisiana. Today it's more in Southeast, South Central Texas. So I wouldn't get locked in on the, um, on the location, but we are starting to get some consistency on some of these higher amounts. Um, and in contrast, you have the European, which kind of hold some of the heavier rain back offshore. This is certainly possible. Um, we don't get the heaviest rains inland, kind of right along the coast and the totals are substantially lower. This has really been 
the trend of both of these models, the GFS has been very aggressive in the rainfall forecast. The European has been much more muted in its forecast. Um, some of the other guidance is probably a little bit closer to the GFS, um, but some of these totals are getting pretty up there. And so the National Center, WPC, and the forecasters up there sort of siding a little bit with the GFS, but pulling those numbers back. So we're not going, uh, you know, really high numbers, but, you know, we're talking anywhere from six to possibly eight, maybe 10 inches of rain across the coastal counties here from the Sabine down towards Matagorda Bay, possibly even the Corpus Christi area. And we even bumped those totals up a little bit more up towards that I-10 corridor, anywhere from four, possibly eight inches of rain. That includes the Metro Houston, Harris County area, and then you can kind of see that gradient, the rainfall falls off. But the good news now maybe is we are getting more rain here into central Texas in the hill country where they desperately need the rainfall. Um, so we're going to be paying attention to this. This possibly leads to bigger issues with the river systems. We're getting more rain now further inland. So the Brazos and the Trinity, which are already elevated, uh, could get more water in them than we were initially thinking when it was just down here on the coast. The other thing we're going to be looking at in the, in the time frame is, is really we're going to start to see showers and thunderstorms on Monday, not probably a big flash flood and flood threat on Monday, but it's as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday that we start to see the higher end threat for heavy rainfall, and not only just heavy rainfall, but the, the uh, rainfall rates, those, those how much rain falls in a short period of time, and so we could be talking two, three, four, maybe even higher. If we get enough instability, five inches of rain in an hour. And the other thing we're going to be watching for is any of those bands uh, or training where the storms move over the same area again and again. And WPC has highlighted uh, a good portion of southeast Texas down towards Matagorda Bay over in southwest Louisiana under a moderate risk. So this is a level three out of four for flash flooding as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's really the time period we're focusing in on. You know, we've been talking, a lot of what you're seeing out there is five-day totals, but a lot of this is going to fall in that Tuesday, Wednesday period. And then as we get into Wednesday, Thursday, further to the west out here in South Central Texas, the coastal bend, deep South Texas, and Friday toward the Rio Grande Plains. Again, desperately need the rainfall out here. We just don't need it all at once, but a lot of times that's how it tends to happen in the state of Texas. Yeah, and this scenario is just another reminder of why we don't just look at one model. We look at many model runs, especially, like you said, on the rainfall amounts. Jeff, also the coastal impacts have changed. We're seeing increased wind and tide threats. And this is not so much due to the center of that low coming toward us. It's still expected to sit to stay well south of us. This is more because of the gradient between the high pressure out to our east and the low pressure in the Gulf. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and it's it's really starting to focus in here now on the, the northern Gulf, uh, upper Texas coast, southwest Louisiana coast with that, what we call the fetch or, or that long area of strong gusty winds. So we could be talking 30, 35, 40, 45 mile an hour winds across the northwestern Gulf of Mexico, our outer coastal waters, even into our inland bays, so Matagorda and, and Galveston Bay as we get into uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. So conditions begin to increase tomorrow. You're gonna get bigger waves on the coast tomorrow, passing showers, passing squalls, increasing winds. And then think it, it really goes downhill on Tuesday and Wednesday. So small craft really need to be in port by tomorrow evening and stay in port until conditions improve. But this is the tide forecast. Uh, for Wednesday morning, so this is high tide around Wednesday morning, and this is above mean low, low water. And so what that means is above the barnacle level, so above uh, areas that are typically inundated with water. And we're talking anywhere from four to six feet from southwest Louisiana around Holly Beach and Cameron over towards Sabine Pass, Bolivar, uh, Rollover, uh, Galveston Island, and then down towards the west end near San Luis Pass. And then a pretty large area of, of three to five feet above mean low, low water from south central Louisiana all the way down towards maybe Port O'Connor. And on the upper Texas coast, around that four, four and a half feet, four and a half feet is kind of the threshold where we start to get the coastal flood issue. So you start to get low-lying roads near the coast, backside of Galveston Island on the west end, 
the front side of Galveston Island down on the west end at the, at the beach access points. The water can get up into those beach access points. Uh, Highway 87 over on Baller, even though it's been raised, we can even at these levels, we could get some debris and overwash uh, near the east end where 87 and 124 come together. And then Blue Water Highway, Surfside, Quintana Beach and Bazoria County and uh, portions of Southeast Harris County and mainland Galveston County, San Leon, uh, Seabrook, Toddville Road area that's right there on Galveston Bay, uh, Shore Acres, and then up towards the Lynchburg Ferry Landing uh, near the Monument Inn. Uh, we could have some, some water covering some of the roads at times of high tide. And I've kind of gone in and did a, a closer look at the, the different uh, points here. So Morgan's Point up in Galveston Bay. Uh, the, the best case or the, the most likely scenario right now is around just over about four feet, maybe four and a half to five feet. So again, just kind of crossing over that threshold where we start to have issues. But there is the potential it could go higher. And so the, the, the light gray here is the kind of the confidence band, if you will, um, or the uncertainty in the ensemble. And so, you know, we could potentially see tides up over six feet in the west side of Galveston Bay. And that, that would certainly bring coastal flooding uh, into areas around uh, southeast Harris County. This is Pleasure Pier, so the front side of Galveston Island. Uh, kind of similar here, uh, the, the most likely scenario is up around five feet as we get into Wednesday morning. Um, but the potential here is to go even up even higher than that. And so we'll be paying very close attention to this. And then I did want to show further down the coast at Sargent, um, not quite as, as high down here. So running in the three to four foot range, but there still could be impacts. And so we're anticipating uh, some of the greater impacts to be around um, the upper Texas coast, Galveston Bay, over towards Beaumont, Port Arthur, uh, and then over to southwest Louisiana. And the further west you get, uh, the tides maybe about a foot lower or so, but we could still have impacts down here with low-lying roads uh, cut off or, or have water at times of high tide. And so we, we, we've seen this before. This isn't anything that's uh, super concerning. But be aware that there could be seawater in places there is normally not seawater this week along the coast. And really after today, things are going to get pretty nasty down on the beaches. And so really big surf is going to start coming in and rip tides and rip currents are going to be significant. And so uh, today's probably the last decent day uh, to be down there on the beach and in the water. And we really want people to take that seriously. Uh, especially as we get into tomorrow, that, that wave action is going to start coming up. Those rip currents are going to start to increase. And the weather may not be too bad tomorrow. You'll just have passing showers, maybe some, some heavy rain at times. But as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when things are going to really go downhill. And so, you know, the, 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 the kind of message going forward here, stay, stay tuned to the weather, stay tuned to the forecast, especially as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday for the, the flood potential here. Uh, in Southeast Texas and in other areas along the coast. Uh, and then down on the coast, uh, pretty hazardous marine conditions as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and possibly even lingering into Thursday as we just kind of keep this onshore flow on the west side of this thing. It's gonna be weakening, that flow will be weakening, but we could still have high tides and, and, and high seas as we even get into Thursday on the upper Texas coast. So, so people need to be paying attention and, and, and watching that. Jeff, thank you very much. Great stuff as always. And we'd like to remind everybody to subscribe and share our Weather Insights YouTube channel. Be sure to share it with friends and family so that you and everyone else can stay in touch on the latest of what's going on in the tropics. And be sure to join us on the next Weather Insights podcast.